Good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Ben, and this is part nine, I think, to our Risk of Flame tutorial series that was inspired by Risk of Rain. And I'm excited. We're going to, first of all, okay, so the first thing you need to know is that in the description for this video, I'm doing something that I've never done before. I'm placing the code for this project. Now, the reason I'm doing it is because there's some people that have run into errors that for, I mean, just because I'm not with them in person, it makes it really hard for me to debug, and I've not been able to help them, and I feel bad because they want to continue the series. So I'm putting the code for this video inside the description. I'm putting the file in there so you can import it through GameMaker Studio and get all cut, caught up and get the errors fixed. So I do highly, highly recommend not doing that if your game is running fine. So, I mean, if, it's just best for you to follow along and code with me. I'm only making this exception this time because I want everyone to be at the same spot. And also because this video is going to be just a little bit complicated. So, the reason being, I'm gonna, we're going to recode some stuff. And because... Okay, so I found out, let's, let's review kind of how we're doing stuff here. When we press the C key, we change into the three shot object, right? Using instance change. Well, it seems the instance change is working differently for different people. At least that's what I've seen. And I've also seen other glitches with instance change. Like uh, if you can see in the game, um, here, let me run it here, and we can. Sh I'll show you. So, when you actually shoot the bullet, sometimes there are uh, glitches caused when it changes into the new object, and I'm just not a fan of it, honestly. So, whoa, what did I do? Oh, I clicked on the Yo-Yo Games thing. Whoops. So, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this same logic. So imagine that, in, so we've got the two objects, right? Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to split the step event into two different scripts based on which object we are or which state we are. So come into your object player, and inside of here, we're going to set a variable, and we're going to call this very, what, what the heck is B? Bullet. That oh, that's the bullets that we're creating. Okay, so we're gonna create a. <laughs> wow, I probably should comment that right if I don't even know what my own code is. That's why you should always comment your code. Bullet variable. Bullet object. That's a better way of describing. It. So okay, let's uh create a variable called state, and state is going to be e equal to movement or actually I'm just going to use move. So our character is going to have different states. He's going to have firing and he's going to have move and actually he's going to have other states that we're going to add in later but for now these are the only two we're going to worry about. So the move state is actually the object that he is right now. So inside of our step event we're going to grab all of this code, right? This huge, well actually not all of it. Let's see, uh, keyboard, yeah, okay. So let's change this right here to if not place free x, y plus one. So what this does is I just changed the else statement right here into another check because here's the thing. We want gravity. Oh, let's see. Yeah. We want gravity. Um, we're going to take this out right here. I just want to make sure we get this working right. 
plus gravity equals zero, and we can take this out of here. So basically, before our jumping code and our gravity code was combined, and I just separated them. So now this is only a gravity code, and this is only a jumping code. And we're going to have to move the, this as well down into the jumping. So we'll do an else in the jumping code as well. And we'll set that to there. OK, so grab our jumping code, copy this, and move it above the gravity code. OK, I'm going kind of fast. And that's another reason I wanted to put the file in the description, because this is going to get a little crazy, because I'm changing code instead of just adding code. And that gets trickier. So here's our gravity, our updated gravity one. You can, If you need to pause, you can see that. Here's the updating jumping that is uh, right above the gravity right now. So I'm going to copy everything that's not gravity, so all of this up here everything. Okay. And we're just going to leave gravity in here. Now, I'm copying that. We're going to we're going to create a script. And we're going to call this script. I don't know if I, I haven't used scripts in this tutorial yet, but a script is basically just a code that we can call multiple times in any object, but I like to use them for organizing the code. So script uh, player move state. So this is going to be what our player does when he's in the move state. And we're just going to copy everything that was in that code down there and put it in here. And I've got an error somewhere. Um, there we go. I had an extra thing. So uh, if you need to look at this, I'm going to show you right here. You can pause. And then down here, you could pause if you want to try and copy that code. But like I said, I'm putting this file in the, in the description. So that's our uh, move state. Now we're going to create another script, and we're going to call this one script uh, player three shot state. Awesome. And we're just going to put some brackets in here. You technically don't need to put those brackets, but I always do. It's just kind of my habit, and it doesn't really matter. So, let's see. So we can take out this gravity code. Why? Because we don't need it anymore in here. Everything else, though, we're going to copy all of this. And we're going to put it in our three-shot state script. Right? Awesome. So now we've got those uh, separated out. Now we've got an animation end here. And we're doing some very specific things inside of this. Um, but instead of instance change, we want this to be state equals move. So that's nice, right? We can just change the state. So we're going to copy this code. Now coming to our player object and we're going to add an animation end animation end but we're only going to run this animation end if we're uh, oh crap I hate it when game maker does that come on really I know there's a way to fix it but I can never remember how to This is a glitch that drives me insane. Like, you have no idea. There we go. Got it. Just minimize it and bring it back up. OK. So where are we? Uh, animation end script. OK. So we're just going to copy our animation end script from the other one. But inside of this, we want to do a check first. If state equals, use the comparison operator, uh, 
three shot. So basically, we're only going to run this animation end code right here if we're in the three shot state. All right? So perfect. That's how we want to do that. Now we need to come into our three shot and. What did we do? Oh, that's just canceling. Okay, awesome. So now we don't really need the three shot object anymore. I'm going to hold on to it for just a second, just in case I forgot something, but we actually don't need it. And inside of here, okay, so inside of our step event, now is when we're going to split up the step event. Now the gravity, we want gravity to be effective no matter what object we are, right? So that's crucial right here. That's why we have this outside of our split step event. But now we're going to create a split up step event. So if state equals move, we're going to do something else if state equals a uh, three shot we're going to do something and what are we going to do well we've already got these scripts written out which makes it nice and convenient and easy to use script player move state and script player uh, three shot state Hopefully this works, right? <laughs> I did this in my Grain War game. I, I switched everything from objects to a state-based system, which I've always recommended from the start, but it's been complicated, but I figured out a way to simplify it. So I was like, hey, look, this is pretty simple code right here. And it makes sense logically to me. So I thought, you know what? I bet that'll work for him. So I really like it. So. I'm probably going to use this in every single game now where I split it up into a state system and then have different scripts for each state. So now what we need to do, we need to go into our key press for our player because we don't want to change anymore into that. We just want to switch states. So state equals three shot. Yeah, state equals three shot. That's it. So that's easy enough. And let's run the game. So you can see everything else works like it should. Gravity, the character. Um, the three shot code isn't working right now though. So let's find out why. So let's see, our move state, that's irrelevant. Uh, three shot state. This isn't a step event. If bullets, oh yeah, we have to, okay. I forgot, sorry. Uh, because, yeah, we have to, we have to, uh, we have to switch to the new image index, right? Or the new sprite index, that's what we're doing wrong. So when we press the C key, image, or so let's see, sprite index equals sprite player three shot. Awesome. And we want to change back afterwards too. And that would be in our animation end. Sprite player. Okay. And one more thing we want to do is uh, we want to make sure that we can only press the C key if we're in the movement state. If state equals move. That way we can't, you know, refire our gun even when we're in the other state. So, let's run this one more time. Hopefully I don't look like an idiot in this one, like the last one. So we're running, can jump, everything works fine. We can fire the bullets. Ah, that's interesting though. If we're in the air, the image speed 
goes down. Do you see that? So uh, let's figure out what's going on there. Let's go into our player object. Oh, it's that's a s easy fix, I think. Yeah, if state I hate putting another if state in here. State equals move, but this is really oh crap! What did I do? Oh well, whatever. Uh. In our, in our jumping animation, we're changing the image index based on the vertical speed, right? That's what this does. That chooses, that's what makes our player change images depending on whether he's falling or jumping up. And we only want to do that if we're in the move state. We don't want to do it when we're in the firing state. So that's all I did right here. So I know this video doesn't feel like we're making progress, like as in stuff that's going to make the game cooler, that we're recoding stuff that was already in it. Yeah, that works now. But what this does is this improves the game engine, and we're going to use this same state system to improve the enemy AI, so that when we fire on them, they actually like stall, or there's even a knockback. We could mess around with knockback and stuff like that. So uh, one of the other issues that somebody pointed out to me, and I don't know if I can, I don't know if I'm gonna have time in this video to fix it out, but w to fix it, but we will actually be fixing this issue, is when the enemies fall on like that when they kind of freak out because they're on top of the player. So uh, I will fix that as well. And those two just got stuck inside of each other. So we'll be fixing that and we're going to be using the state system that we just switched over to to do that. But here, you want to know the nice thing about this? See our player 3 shot now? He is gone. You can delete that. Out of here. And the other nice thing is we have our create event, right, with a few variables. Now we've got a step event, and all it has is a state system right here that checks and then determines which, which, uh, which step event we want to run, depending on which state we're in, right, which script we want to run. And then we just control the gravity right here. So our step event is really simple. And then our collision event is going to be the same. The animation end, this just switches back to the the move state if we're in the three shot state and our C our press C it just switches to the three shot the three shot state if we're already in the move state so it switches to that state and we don't need that other object anymore so that is awesome and I'm going to save this game where it is right now and I will upload the code for you guys and we'll switch the enemies over to a state-based system in the next one so that we can control their artificial intelligence a little bit better and add in some new attacks. We'll add in a special attack that can hit more than one enemy at a time. So these are th some things that I have planned for the next video. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys later.